Hi guys, Margaret Paul here from Election Wire. Well, it's election day and voting has kicked off around the country. We're here in Canberra and we thought we'd speak to someone who's been following the campaign pretty closely. So we're off to speak to ABC journalist Stephen Jedjik. So Stephen, we're here in Canberra, the nation's capital, the political epicentre of Australia. You would think that during an election campaign it would be it would be simply buzzing. Is that the case? Uh, no, in short it's not. Canberra is very quiet at this time of year. Um, and that's because, put simply, there's no political gain to be had for the major parties. There are no marginal seats in Canberra. We've only got two seats here, lower house seats. Both of them are very solidly Labor. So as a result of that, uh, very few political uh, points are here to be gained. And there is very, there's essentially not much reason for the leaders to spend a huge amount of the time here. What is a little bit more interesting, locally speaking, is the Senate race. We've got two Senate seats, and what's different with the territories is that they actually come up for election every single election, rather than on uh, the corresponding ones. So we've got one seat that is always taken by Labor, and that'll happen again. Then we've got a second seat, which has traditionally always been taken by the Liberals. But what's happening this time, happened in 2007 as well, is that the Greens are launching a fierce campaign for that seat. They've got a fairly high-profile candidate, and Who's that? Targeting her. her name's Lynn Hatfield Dodds. Uh, she's well known. She used to be the head of ATCOS, the social justice body. So she's running for the Greens and putting the Liberals under a lot of pressure. Now, the local senator, Gary Humphreys, who's very well respected, hasn't been helped by his leader, Tony Abbott, who on two or three successive occasions has made announcements that he'd like to see cuts to the public service. Uh, he wants to reduce its size by about 12,000 jobs, wants to increase the efficiency dividend. That sort of thing plays quite well in the broader electorate who aren't very sympathetic towards Canberra. Most of the time they'd think Canberra, they'd think grey, soulless bureaucrats uh, in their offices, you know, uh, you know supping happily at the, at the public trough. So that plays very well out in places, for example, in Lindsay or in marginal uh, seats in New South Wales mm. and Queensland doesn't play so well in Canberra um, and so that might be well, why, why Gary Humphreys might find himself in trouble tonight. But what issues really matter to voters in Canberra? Look, it's, 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 it's hard to, to generalise because Canberra is perhaps a slightly less uniform place than, <laughs> than most people might imagine it. It's seen as a really homogenous place but it's got its, its quirks and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's got its idiosyncrasies as well. The, the public service is important. Um, it, it accounts for a large portion of our workplace and people are very sensitive about any suggestion of cuts. That's not only because a lot of people work there and are afraid of potentially losing their jobs, but also because our private sector is so closely intertwined with it. So if the public sector reduces in size, the private sector tends to, to take some of the pain from that. Other issues that are quite important in Canberra, I mean, as ever, health is, is a huge issue in Canberra. Um, of course, it's, it's largely a, a state or territory government responsibility, but some of the different uh, pl uh, plans put forward by the different leaders have come up for, for a fair amount of interest. And quite interestingly, the NBN has emerged as, as quite a big issue here as well. The National Broadband the Network? The National Broadband Network, yeah. Um, Canberra is a very well-connected place, uh, but there are still parts of Canberra, particularly the newer, the newer parts of Canberra, places like Gungahlin, where internet access has been uh, abominable. Major issues that will decide the election federally, do you think? I think that some of the biggest issues will come down to the perceptions of stability um, or competence around Labor. Tony Abbott and the Liberals have clearly made some traction with their claims that Labor isn't stable because of the knifing of Kevin Rudd just before the election. And I think they're playing quite cleverly on a, a genuine feeling of dissatisfaction in some parts of the community about the fact that they never got to pass judgment on, on Kevin Rudd. Now, Labor can correctly point out that this isn't a presidential system in the end, the, the leadership is a gift that's given by the party room. But the way that campaigns are conducted now is increasingly presidential and people did feel in 2007, or many people did, like they were voting for Kevin Rudd and not for Labor. And so I think there is some, some genuine resentment out there at the fact that they never got to, to pass judgment on him. On the other hand, Liberal, the Liberal Party has to uh, try and contain the, uh, the impression that Tony Abbott himself is a little bit unreliable or untrustworthy. And work choices in the last few days has emerged as a bit of a lightning uh, point on this. Uh, almost all of, the, of Friday, yesterday, the, 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 second, well, the last full day, day of campaigning, Julia Gillard 
went out very hard on work choices and said work choices was going to be brought back on Monday. Now, she was challenged very, very harshly on that by, by many journalists, but it's clearly an issue that Labor strategists believe is still alive in the community. We know that in 2007, it, it probably cost John Howard the 2007 election, among other issues. And there's clearly a feeling inside the Labor camp that reviving the spectre of work choices will be enough to, 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 to turn people away from voting from Tony Abbott. Okay. Whether it will be enough, only time will tell.